Welcome to your third tutorial on building API documentation using Swagger. In this tutorial, we'll do a deep dive into YAML. YAML is spelled Y-A-M-L. It is a language that Swagger uses to write its documentation. As you can see, on the left part of the screen is YAML. On the right part is HTML CSS. Now, before we do a deep dive, I would like to explain some things to you. The first one is resource. A resource is a collection of endpoints in one category. For instance, you can have a user's resource. Then you can have a post resource. In a blog, you can have a comment resource. And a comment resource can have endpoints for deleting comments. You can have another endpoint for adding a comment. Another endpoint for editing a comment or updating and so on and so forth and the model is a description of a resource these are not standard definitions but my own definitions you can google to get more so a model for comments could be what your consumer api consumer is expecting to get as a res response for instance in comments table you have an ID, you have a, a posts ID, you have a, a user ID, then you have the comment this body itself, the body of the comment, you have time it was created, then time it was updated. Now this is not enough, just listing them, so your model will also contain the data type data type is date time of each of them date time and uh, the body is text but in this case we use string and this is an integer this is also an integer and this is also an integer now this is a model but it's not complete according to swagger you will still have to put a definition of this you can a description of each of them so for a description for ID, you can say that this, this is a unique identifier for a specific comment in the database, or just for a specific comment. Then you have to describe each of these. Remember that this is API documentation. So if anybody wants to understand more about your comments, they will, they will read they will check out the model and the model will tell them more about the response they are getting so now we understand this let us start out into yaml so first of all you observe that this is swagger 2.0 at the moment of creating this video and then there is info and then there is a description this description you're seeing right here this is it right here i often encourage people to start with this and um, modify it as they go so before we move ahead i would like to show you that i have already have my web service built out in the previous tutorial i assume that if you're taking this tutorial you already understand how to build your own apis if you don't know how to build your web service and apis i would advise you to go to my youtube channel youtube.com slash c slash brain brain t-e-m-o-r-g and hit enter when my channel opens up you subscribe then you hit on playlist then you scroll to api for beginners step by step after taking this tutorial you should be able to build your own apis and now that you've built your own apis i have built mine in the past i called it lumen blog here is it and then what i did was start the server the way I started the server was right click, open a new command prompt, and I type php s. My server was built with php localhost 8000. Sorry for that, php s localhost 8000. Oh. So this is essentially what I typed, PHP S localhost 8000. 
minus t public. I started my server, and this is how to start the server on Lumen, Laravel Lumen. My microservice was built with Laravel Lumen, and it to tells me that my server is running at localhost 8000. And if I open my application and go to app, HTTP, controllers, you will see that I have two main controllers here, users and post controller. I'll open users and I'll go back and open posts. We will need them further down this tutorial. And then I would like to show you my endpoints. So I get back to Lumen blog, routes, and open web.php. This is where I have my endpoints. This is a resource, user's resource, that has five different endpoints. The first endpoint is for adding a user, second is for viewing a user, third is for updating, fourth for deleting, and fifth for viewing all users. And the same thing here too. This is protected by a middleware of OAuth, which means to access my posts, you have to send a token to me. And it has five endpoints. And this is a prefix. So to access any of my endpoints, you have to type localhost. What we have here, you have to type localhost colon 8000 slash API slash v1 slash whatever you have here so for instance we want to see the list of users it will be localhost slash it localhost colon 8000 slash api slash v1 index and we will see a list of our users and it has to be a get request as you can see here so i'll open something that you use to test your apis you have to install yours so if you open your google chrome click on apps if you pan down to the bottom of the page bottom right which i will show you right now to the bottom right you see web store you hit on your web store and when it opens you type postman postman then you hit enter it will open a postman and you download postman here is it not the interceptor this is the real postman so you install it into your chrome it's a chrome extension and after installing it you have to start it by clicking apps again then you see your postman here or look for it and this is mine so when you click on this, your postman will open. This is mine right here. Mine is open. So we have to paste our endpoint, which is this. We have API v1 index. Make sure that this local host is running, which we have done. With this, it's, it's active and it's running. So if we make sure that you set it to get request, because in our code, it's actually a get request so hit send and we should get a response so if we hit on it's on html so if we set it to json we have an error so i will resolve the error right now of course the error is because we made a mistake in the endpoint if we get back to our code we'll see that the prefix is api v1 slash another prefix which is posts or slash this other prefix which is users in this case we did not add users so v1 slash users slash index we hit enter and there we have it list of users in our database now understanding this will help you to write your yaml easily so right here, let us make our first edit, and what we are going to call our API is our Lumen blog. Lumen blog. It's a version one of our APIs, and the description is this is a sample API documentation 
đấy yes by tip partner you could observe this slight drag because it's constant it's constantly converting it to json and outputting on your page for lumen blog microservice there we have it and then you can enter all your other details i will enter mine in terms of service simply my youtube channel youtube.com slash c com slash c slash brenton org and my email is my real email so i have tiff at gmail.com and then this is the license and um, remember that our api has a base path which is slash api slash v1 and that forms up a base path i know it because the way i wrote this api it has to be api slash v1 the way you write yours might be different and in the case that you don't have a base path you can just leave only this so the next one is that we're going to enter the domain name of our url where your api is hosted for most people they like to host it as a subdomain in api dot their site dot com in our case ours is hosted locally so it is localhost for now localhost thousand and that's settles it that's where our api is settled as you can see swagger has automatically added our base path to our local host our host so we have local host colon 8000 slash api slash v1 so the rest of our resources will be stemming from this in the next tutorial we'll continue deep down to understand yaml Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial and don't forget to visit my channel and hit on subscribe. See you in the next video.